Hi everybody, Stu, AG6AG. Today, we're going to take a look at the service and maintenance issues that we have with deep cycle lead soaked batteries. Deep cycle lead soaked batteries are the least expensive of all the deep cycle batteries out there. They're a very old technology. Uh, now, the thing you have to remember though is they require a little bit more maintenance and uh, you should be testing these batteries. Uh, you know, I recommend every six months, but at least every year to see if you have a did cell or there's other issues with the battery. I'm going to show you the things that you should be doing if you have that battery plugged in all the time into a charger. I'm also going to talk about some of the other safety issues that you have with a lead soaked battery in this video. Um, the one thing to remember is that the tests that we show aren't 100% conclusive that the battery is at full snuff, but it's an amazingly good indication as to where that battery may be or whether the battery has a bad cell. So, without any further ado, I, oh, you know what? I just wanted to thank everyone that subscribed to my channel. Thank you so much. And if you haven't subscribed, do me a favor and click the subscribe button for me, will you? Um, keeps the uh, XYL off my you-know-what. Anyway, oh, and there's a little notification icon down there if you want to get uh, notices and email when I come out with a new video, okay? All right, enough of a sales pitch. Let's get on with it. Okay, well, it's Stu, AG6AG, and we're in the shop right now. Today, I want to show you how to service and test your deep cycle lead-soaked battery. So I've got a voltmeter on here right now, and I am verifying I have a full surface charge on it. It's up above 13 volts. Now, I'm going to let this sit for about an hour. Uh, the reason is I want that surface uh, voltage kind of to taper down a little bit. So I want it off the charger for about an hour. Um, there's different numbers on how long to leave it off the charger. There's all sorts of different opinions here. I find that an hour is sufficient. Anyway, I'm going to go ahead and break for a little bit, and we'll get right back to it. Well, okay, we're back, and it's been, uh, actually it's been a couple hours. You notice that we're down under 13 volts, and that's where I wanted to be. I wanted this thing to equalize and rest for a little while after that long charge uh, to get it up to full charge. So, with that, we're going to go ahead and take off our meter here, and we'll get that out of the way. And we're going to begin to prep for testing the battery. Now, we're going to go ahead and we're going to take these caps off. Now, this is not a sealed lead acid battery. Could you take the caps off a sealed lead acid battery? Oh, you better believe you can. Um, you have to get a little aggressive with the case and stuff like that. But yeah, absolutely, you can do that. Now, why would you want to do that? Well, probably not for the same reasons we're doing it here. Okay, so now I'm going to take all these caps off. Oh, and by the way, if, if you're ever curious as to whether it's sealed or not sealed, you can certainly go look at the model number, but you can see right here that I have a vent, right? And that vent probably covers all of the cells to allow them to vent. That means that it's a standard lead acid or a lead soaked battery. This is also the least expensive of all the batteries that are out there. Oh, another warning, okay? You are messing with sulfuric acid here, all right? Never drop your guard. This stuff can hurt you. Okay, so hopefully this very aggressive shot I'm giving you right here shows that the level of water is down. If you look, you can see there are little plastic things that come down and that indicates what the top level is. Now, why is why why are these why have these gone down, right? Well, let's talk about that 
Let me rechange my angle a bit. All right. Well, so what happens to that acid? Why does it disappear? What well, does it disappear? Uh, and actually, all the uh, chemicals of sulfuric acid are still there. Uh, the issue is that the uh, H2O, or the water portion of the acid, has gotten so hot that it's turned into a gas and basically vented. That gets hot because during charging or discharging, you have a chemical reaction with the acid. That's what, that's what causes those things to take place. So, how do we test the battery, though? Uh, well, we use our handy-dandy friend, the hydrometer. And this hydrometer is a very inexpensive item. I picked it up from Amazon. And what we do is we draw the acid into the hydrometer. I'm going to need to draw more than that, I think. Uh, right. I want to go up to about that level right there. Okay. What I'm looking for is I'm going to hold it this way, and I'm looking to look. It's all the way up at the top. It good. It's a little under 13. So that's that's where we want to see it. This is a reasonably new battery, so we want to see it there. We're going to go from cell to cell. We want to look at the same thing. And, yep, the same thing. We're going to do this for all the cells, all the way across. We're looking for this stuff to actually be um, basically at about the same level, which is what we're seeing. So it means the state of this battery is good. The cells are good, the acid's good, the specific of each cell looks good. And so far, they all look about the same. Let's see, we only have two more. We'll go back here. And again, I want to remind everybody, you're dealing with sulfuric acid here. All right? So don't get this on you. Don't get this in your eyes. Wear safety glasses. Uh, work in a well-ventilated area. All that. So you know what? All of these cells are about the same, and they're at the high end. So this battery is good. But now, how do we deal with the low water content? Well, I have a special tool for that. It is this right here. Back in the old days, if you're old enough to remember uh, going to the gas station and having folks check your battery, they would have one of these, and all cars pretty much had, uh, you know, uh, uh, acid-soaked batteries. So they would come out, they would take the covers off, and basically they would press this down and let it run until it emptied. That would set the exact correct height for the acid. Pop it off. We'll do the next one. Push it down. We'll do this for all of them. And then our battery will be full. What's the last thing we're going to do? Well, after we get all the water back in here and get the water levels back up to where they're supposed to be, well, we are just going to go ahead, wipe the top of the battery off, put it back on the charger to get that final trickle charge, and we're done. So, I hope this was helpful. Um, this seems to be a, a dying art unless you own a little electric uh, trolling motor or something. Uh, so, again, this is uh, standard maintenance. With that, this is Stu, AG6AG, saying 73. Well, there you go. You know, what we're not testing is if that battery will last for all the amp hours that it's rated for. There's no way for us to do that without loading the battery over time and actually running a discharge test. The hydrometer does a really good job of indicating what each cell's capacity is and how well that cell is doing. 
Uh, so if you're way up in the top end of the green, chances are you're going to get that 80% of output that you're looking for. All that said, another important thing that you can do is you can actually run load tests on that battery. I have a product that's from uh, West Mountain that does a absolutely fabulous job on that. Um, I recommend it very highly, but uh, it's expensive. And if you're only doing this once a year for testing, uh, you know, I probably wouldn't worry about it. You may have your own method of checking if the battery capacity is there. And I'd love for you to make comments down below on how you do that. Anyway, I thought this would be a fun twist and uh, uh, I plan on doing some additional videos on power and stuff like that coming up. So with that, I'm Stu, AG6AG, and I want to say 73 to all of you. And hey, you know what? Don't forget to subscribe if you like what I do. 73, everybody. Hope to hear you all on the air.